I didn't dream up the emergency declaration petition. It was Margaret Hinder who, who had that idea. So I'm very grateful to her for getting it going. Um, the topic that I've been asked to talk about is, is emergency modes around the world and, and, and the context for it. I've been doing a, a large amount of reading on the Second World War, and that led me to the interwar period, uh, into First to Second World War period, and then up to the First World War. That's an important period for certain types of, of emergency response. Um, but the other thing is um, I, I started work on and have produced a draft of a, a climate emergency model act just to give some idea of what might this thing look like. I mean, it's, it's one thing to have a petition and, and start urging people to do it, but we, ha we need to have at least some idea of what, what it could uh, imply. Um, and in the course of doing that, I had to look at, um, well, didn't have to, but I, I found it interesting to look at emergency legislation around the world. So I just want to give you some quick uh, insights into that. Um, before I start, though, I just want to make a really quick comment about um, the difference between what you might call individual emergencies and, and social emergencies. And I think that this is really crucial. Um, the one that sticks in, in my um, heart is the time I forgot to pick up my eldest child from creche on time. Not just five minutes late, but somewhat later. And I suddenly <laughs> remembered several things. I, I remembered the staff waiting with my child. I remembered my child wondering what the hell had happened to me. And I remembered my partner. And I thought, oh my god. <laughs> so I can tell you that that was a true personal emergency. <coughs> Everything else that I had on my list of things that was keeping me busy just dropped off and I just worked out the fastest way to get there and how to apologise to everybody along the way. Um, okay, it's a personal emergency. But the thing is, and, and James may, I mean, she's actually hit the thing on the head with, with the, the herd question. Um, we are in a social emergency. And so the crucial thing is we know that we've, we've got the capacity, like we wouldn't have, humans would not have lived this long on the earth when all our ancestors you know, whatever, would never have lived this long if they didn't have a capacity for going into emergency mode because every now and then you have to do it, otherwise you don't survive. So then the question is, and we're, we're, we are social animals, and so therefore we have to have some way of doing that. And, and this, this notion of social signalling is, I think, is crucial, like looking around who, whose you know, leadership, peers, whatever, our reference points are, are crucial. Um, and the idea of declaring a social, uh, sorry, declaring an emergency is in fact... It, it, does, it does several things. It, it's, it's a social signal of the highest, I mean, it's the highest order of social signal. But in order for it to be credible, you, you can't have the crying wolf thing. You, you've got to follow it through with real substance, otherwise it just becomes rhetorical and people just discount it. Um, so then the other thing is it does, and, and this is a bit similar at a social level to what our own brains do when we face crucial questions, we focus attention. So it doesn't mean it's the only thing we do. Like, for example, if, if you're having to get from A to B to rescue somebody, um, you still have to get safely from A to B. Like, you've got, to, you've got to be dealing with a whole lot of questions, you've got to stay alive, you've got to keep breathing, you've got to, there's a million things you have to do. But you've got a goal that's, that, that, that has got your constant attention and, and it's driving the, the key choices that you, you're making. So special attention and priority is crucial. The other one is commitment of necessary resources. Um, from a legal point of view, if you need special powers, then they should be there. Um, and then the other crucial thing, um, and this, is, this can't be underestimated enough, it's time limited. And there's several reasons for this. One is um, people don't really like living in, a, in high pressure emergency mode for too long. You know, like you, you make sacrifices, you push other things to one side, you don't, you don't give enough attention to a kind of a balanced life, etc., etc., etc. People get tired of being in emergency mode. That's one, that's one issue. The other issue is that in any society there's a diversity of politics. I mean, that in, a, in a democracy we have to expect that. We have to be able to change governments. We have to have different positions that, we, that people can have. In a diverse society you get... I mean, we need a diverse society because if we all thought the same thing we would end up with a very, very poorly functioning society. So we have to live with diversity. We have to have that in politics. So what happens when you get to an emergency and let's say there's... Uh, well, let, let's say there's a, what was considered at the time a very left-wing government in the United States. They've somehow got to be able to get the people on the right to be prepared to, to join in. Now, with the Second World War, um, they didn't like the right didn't like Roosevelt. They were campaigning against him 
vehemently up until you know the time of Pearl Harbor. And even after that, they didn't give up on it. But what they did do is they said, OK, we might hate Roosevelt, but we also hate being taken over by other countries. And so they said, OK, we're going to work together with the people we don't normally work with, and we'll do it for the duration. And that was the expression, um, for the duration. The other thing, um, and you might say, OK, the next one, the next case is kind of interesting for another reason. In the United Kingdom, the government, and, and in Australia, the, the governments were um, uh, right wing, you know, on the right of, of centre. So you had um, uh, uh, Chamberlain and then um, uh, Churchill, and you had Menzies in Australia. And so a right wing government is in charge of the war effort. And what do they do? Remarkably similar to what a left wing government did in America, remarkably similar to what any of the countries that were engaged in. in quote, total war did. They had to galvanise their economy, they couldn't run it on a neoliberal program, and so right-wingers just simply said, we're realists, and what we do is in normal times, we run an economy which we think will get the best economic growth or whatever the thing was that they were interested in, and then they said, we're realists, and so when there's a crisis, we don't just stick with that, we do what's necessary to deal with the problem, when that problem's over, we'll go back to doing the normal thing. And so this notion of switching out of normal into an emergency response is crucial and it's politically essential to get the cooperation across the political divides that you need. Because when you look at the most intense emergency responses, the most effective emergency responses anywhere, always involve pretty much everybody, most people, apart from criminals and, and a few you know, people who are right out of it, most people will cooperate to a fair extent. They're offering help, they might need help, they might be giving help, they might be doing both. Um, so people tend to pull together but it's in that emergency mode. And so you've got to signal it, you've got to put a time limit on it so that people don't think they've got to live this way always and be friendly to everybody that they usually hate and all the rest of it. So that's important. Now, when you go through the legislation, um, Canada's probably got the, the most interesting legislation at the national level. How are we going for time, by the way? One hmm? minute. One minute, okay. In the case of Canada, they've got a comprehensive piece of legislation. They have had uh, the same sort of natural disasters as, you know, floods, floods fires, whatever. Um, but they've also had um, national security um, crises in, in uh, Quebec and, and so on, you know, separatist movements and so on. So they've got a four-part emergency act which deals with types of emergencies. Now, they don't have one that's perfectly matched to what we're talking about with, with the climate, but you can sort of see if you took... They've got a war emergency, they've got a national security emergency, they've got a sort of like a pandemic health type emergency and they've got natural disaster type emergencies. So there's a suite of, of responses that you can kind of match to most things that they're used to dealing with. Um, the, in, in the United Kingdom, um, when they went to war, they had a, basically a single page act which said, it was the War Emergency Act, and it said the government can do whatever's necessary to protect the nation and its people and provide for their, you know, their livelihood. Um, Full stop. <laughs> like it was, the special powers were for the duration, and it was time limited. For the duration of the emergency, we can do what's what's needed. So that, that's a very very common uh, legal response. And the only way you could legitimately kind of, if you like, get away with what seems like carte blanche with those sort of open powers is to um, is to have the time limit and have a very clear good reason for why you're doing it. Otherwise, the society will jack up and will turf you out as a government. Um, in every country, pretty much that I'm aware of, that I've looked at, but I might be wrong about it being a general rule, but in just about every country after the Second World War, after the emergency period, people turn to a, another government. They turn to the left in Britain, they turn to the right in America, they turn to the left in Australia, and it was, it was the opposite party to whoever had been leading, you know, up to that point. Um, oh, sorry, actually in Australia it was, it was left, right, left. I mean, it was, sorry, the other way around. Um, Labor was... The Liberals were in first, Labor carried through most of the, of the war effort, and then at, at the end, um, they got turfed, Labor got turfed out, and, and Menzies and Co. came back in. So, what else can I say? Um, it, it's emergency response. When you look at the language, you find that that is the common factor. It gets mentioned in relation to natural disasters, security disasters, war disasters, health disasters, financial disasters. Uh, energy supply disasters, think of OPEC if anybody's old enough, and so on. So that it, the emergency idea is the thing that we mostly use to trigger this special response. Thank you. Mm -hmm.